Hi, I'm David Ebo, and I'm going to show you around NuGet, which is the new and exciting package manager for the .NET world. So I'll go to Visual Studio 2010 and start by creating a new MVC3 project. And let's go ahead and create an internet application using Razor. And the next thing I'll do is to bring up NuGet, which I do under this Tools Library Package Manager package manager console. And once I'm here, I can start uh, installing uh, packages. So first I'd like to install entity framework code first. So I can do uh, a get package command slash remote, which will list packages by name. So let's just do entity to see what's available. And I can see that there are some packages, entity code first. And the one I want is the one that uses SQL Server Compact. So I'll do install package ef code first that's equal server compact notice how i get intellisense on the package name and what this did is install not just anti framework but uh, a bunch of packages i have four packages that got installed as a result of dependencies and if we look at the references we'll see entity framework that got added uh, as well as various other assemblies that came with the other packages so I may not have used uh, Entity Framework Code first before. So what I can do is install another package called efcodefirst.sample, which just brings in some sample files just to uh, show me what Entity Framework uh, is all about. So I can see it created a block context as well as a comment and a post class. So this is just a sample, but if I haven't used this before, it'll uh, give me an easy way to get started. So for the sake of the demo, we'll just go ahead and use this sample rather than write a new one. Uh, I'll just make a, a small change just to show that you know we have control over what happens. So I'll just change title to super title. And now this gives us a model, but we don't have controllers and view yet. So what I'll do here is install another package called MVC scaffold. And this is a special type of package that does not itself modify my app, but it brings in additional commands. So after having installed it, I can now type scaffold controller, and I want a controller for the post class. And I also need to tell it the context type to use. So it's going to be blog context. And let's see what happens. So what it did is that it created not only a post controller for me, but all the views that go along with it. So now if I go and run this app and I go to the post controller, I get to create some new records. So I'll just type some random thing for illustration here. So this is not, these are not fancy views, but they are good views to get started. And the interesting point as well is if I go back here, all the views are razor views, which is the new view engine for MVC3. So let's look at the controller that it generated for us. It's a functional constructor, but uh, it does something which is not very good practice, which is that it hard codes the context directly. Instead, what we'd like to do is use a repository pattern. And thankfully, MVC scaffold knows how to do that as well. I can just run the scaffold repository command. And what this will do is create a repository for my post. So we have this i post repository interface, which just has the uh, the CRUD members, and then there's an implementation of that interface on top of our context. So now what we need to do is rescaffold the controller to use this repository instead of having the, the hard-coded context. And I'll put a force flag to tell it to regenerate the pages that it had generated before. And if I look at what's generated now for the post controller, I no longer have any hard-coded reference to my context. So let's build and refresh. And what's going to happen here is that it's going to complain that uh, it cannot instantiate our controller because it has a constructor which takes an iPost repository. And this is where dependency injection uh, comes into the picture. And what we'd like to do here is use, is use Ninject for a dependency injection. So, so far I've only shown you uh, running NuGet commands from uh, the uh, console, which is a PowerShell console here, there's an alternate way of doing it, which is to uh, 
do a reference add library package reference and here I can go online so first I see the packages that I've already installed and I can install some more so let's search for Ninject and specifically we want Ninject for MVC3 so now that I have Ninject uh, of course the assembly references were added it also created a file here that helps me get started with Ninject and uh, specifically here I need to register the mappings that I care about and what I have is an iPost repository that I'd like to map to my specific post repository and now if I go and refresh my app it is back uh, in functional order let's get back to our views if we look at the view that was generated for index for instance one thing I don't like too much about it is that it has hard-coded strings which are uh, fairly typical in MVC and what I'd like to do to get rid of them is install T4 MVC and I will again use our dialog so I can just add package reference go online T4 MVC and once I have installed it I can change this to be MVC dot post Dot edit. Next, I'd like to uh, have a way to easily log errors that happen in my app, and for that, I'm going to install Elma. Once I have Elma, rebuild, and go back to my app, and I'll purposely go to some invalid URLs, and then go to the Elma URL and I can see that Elma was correctly installed but what's interesting is that installing Elma involved not only adding a reference to the Elma assembly but it also made a number of uh, changes to my web config you can see here a new Elma section and there's a bunch more Elma related things uh, later on in web config which normally you would have to do manually and let me show you one more thing here with Elma that if I now choose to uh, get rid of it I can go to my install packages and click uninstall and now if I go back here you'll notice that everything related to Elma is gone from my web config file as well of course as the uh, the reference here next let's look at adding a unit testing project to our app so I'll, I'll do add new project just a standard library my tests I'll get rid of this dummy class here and for this I'd like to use n unit for my unit test so what I can do here is change the project from my MVC application to this new test project and in here I can just install n unit and since I may not know how to use n unit to get started I can also install the sample package which brings in a very simple file that just kind of shows me what an NUnit test looks like so of course normally you would write your own for the sake of this demo I'm just going to use those as is and what's interesting is that as a result of installing NUnit I'm actually getting the ability to run NUnit from the command line here so I'll just go and run it let me just catch the, uh, the full path here and here in the runner I'll just go and find the binary that we have built and we can see our two tests and I'm just going to go, uh, go ahead and run them and sure enough one fails and one passes which was the uh, expectation based on the way those uh, tests were written hopefully this gave you a, a good idea of what NuGet is about uh, the next step I would suggest is that you go to our site NuGet.CodePlex.com and you'll find much more information Thank you.